So today I want to talk about time-based modulation in Zoya and how specifically how to create your own time-based modulation from uh, modules that already exist in Zoya. Uh, when I talk about time-based modulation, I'm talking about things like vibrato, chorus, flanger, and I'm going to go through all of those uh, in this video. Um, but they're all based on the same basic design, which uh, I'm going to do a little bit of background here on the theory, and then I'll, I'll sort of jump into the patching. So the basic idea of any time-based modulation is that you have um, sound, which is made up of oscillations, wiggly air, uh, and it rides on a delay line. And as the delay line is modulated, for instance, in our wonderful illustration here by a sine wave, what happens is, is that as the sine wave uh, goes up towards its peak, the, the delay line gets stretched out. And that causes the frequency of the wiggly air that's moving along it to also get stretched out. It, it gets expanded. And when it gets expanded, it... Uh, lowers in frequency uh, because the wiggly air gets stretched out and the, the frequency is determined by uh, how quickly that wiggly air moves around and the, the space uh, that, it, that it covers is, it takes it longer to cover. Um, and then once it goes past the peak and starts falling into the trough, we get compression. Um, and when it compresses, those wiggly airs get closer and closer together and they they uh, move faster because the the space between the oscillations has decreased now the the example if you start looking into theories of uh, you know vibrato and, and that sort of thing they'll always bring up for, for whatever reason Doppler shift and don't get me wrong Doppler shift is a part of this but I, I think that the example that they use of the siren that goes wee wee you know, as it passes you, it, it drops in pitch. We're probably all familiar with some version of this, but I think the oscillation of the siren makes it a little bit harder to parse what's going on there. So I like the example of, you know, um, anything with a loud engine. If you have a plane flying overhead, the pitch that you hear that plane at will be louder until it passes overhead, or I'm sorry, will be higher until it passes overhead, and then it'll become more of a roar, you know, you know. Um, obviously, I have a second career in doing, you know, sound effects with my mouth, but but the idea is that you know, uh, preceding that that uh, plane the sound waves get compressed as they're pushed forward by the movement of the plane itself. And then as the plane passes, the sound waves stretch back out and they get lower. So anyhow, that's the basic idea behind this time bending thing. So that's the basic idea behind time-based modulation, why it occurs. Um, before I get started in patching, I'm just going to go over a couple of things here. I've already patched in an audio input and a stereo audio output. Um, that's just for my purposes so I can hear uh, through both of my monitors. The camera phone that I'm using has a mono microphone, so you won't be able to hear any stereo effects, although we can talk a little bit about stereo effects later. And I've got some loops uh, prepared. Uh, some have some gain. So I'll use those to demonstrate uh, how these effects work rather than picking up a guitar and trying to keep track of, of everything going on that way. So the, the first place we're going to start is with a vibrato. Um, and a vibrato looks just like this. I'm going to keep using this particular example of the sine wave. What we have is a delay line. And I should point out 
uh, before I get much further, that, that in some previous examples you may have seen me and others refer to the Haas stereo spread as a way to achieve linearly modulated delay lines. Uh, as of firmware 2.0, uh, you can modulate delay lines linearly from the delay line module. Uh, and that's what I'm going to use in this example here. Now, as I'm going through the, ex the, the options for the delay line, a couple of things to keep in mind. Now, you can modulate any length of delay line, but we don't really need a long delay line uh, for, for modulation. Most of the modulation occurs in the 0 millisecond to 30 millisecond region. Um, we do want interpolation on. What interpolation is going to do is smooth that compression and expansion. So in a digital delay, uh, you know, what, what happens is that the samples sort of get compressed and expanded. And if you don't have interpolation, it'll sound uh, sort of ratchety. Um, something you might want to try out on your own. Uh, and then the CV input we have is linear. So what I'm going to do is connect, sorry, uh, what I'm going to do is connect the audio input to the input of the delay line, and then connect the delay line to both of my audio outs. And I'm going to turn on one of these loops. And as I press play, or as I press, as I turn the patch on, shouldn't notice any difference, and I don't. Uh, that's because the delay line's not being modulated yet. Um, and so the next step is to add modulation. Now you can get really exotic with modulation, but I'm going to start with something pretty simple, um, which is just a sine wave LFO. Okay, so let's hear what happens when we connect these two. So I, I connected them at 100% strength because I'm sure some of you have also made this connection and gone, what the heck is going on? Um, so, you know, what's happening there is that the compression is just, an expansion is just way too much and, and things are getting stretched out a ton and you get these sort of wacky pitch artifacts. <laughs> may be cool in some instances, um, but with, you know, your standard vibrato, uh, you know, you, you don't actually use a whole lot of modulation. It's usually a couple of milliseconds. Uh, and so the next thing I'm going to do, and I'm building this the way I would build it for myself. And the way that I would build it for myself is to use an attenuator of some kind. Uh, I'm going to go in and use the CV mixer because this seems like a good opportunity to show off the CV mixer. And the CV mixer slash attenuator has a one channel mode. Um, now in some of my other videos you may have seen me use a multiplier in the same way that I'm about to use the CV mixer. Um, and you can continue to use a multiplier it's probably what I would reach for because I'm used to it, but I wanted to show off the CV mixer. So instead of connecting the LFO directly to the delay line, I'm going to connect it to the CV mixer. And then I'm going to connect the output of the CV mixer to the input of the delay line. And this allows me to uh, control the intensity of that LFO that's directed at the delay line. Um, so let's start running a loop again. I 
can start increasing the depth. We can play around with the speed of our LFO. So now we hear a much more traditional vibrato effect. Uh, and I switched, the, the mixer has, you know, a, a secondary view where we can see it as this, uh, you know, visualized line. I, I switched back to uh, the bias line just so we could see you know, how much the mixer uh, was attenuating the signal. So this is an attenuation if we, uh, you know, built it just by connecting the LFO directly to the delay line um, of 4% or 0 0.04 uh, as a, a decimal value. And, you know, as we push that up, it becomes a little more slinky-like, you know. So, you know, you really don't want to use a ton of uh, modulation on these effects. Okay. So the reason that I started with the vibrato is because the vibrato is kind of a basis for everything that comes after that. The next effect I want to look at is the chorus. And all that a chorus really is, is a modulated delay line mixed with the dry signal. And what happens is that you hear uh, the modulation occur against the dry signal and it creates um, an impression of, you know, phase changes and pitch modulations that are compared to that dry signal. And so it sounds, um, you know, different for that point of contrast. So, you know, I can just, and I'm gonna show this off. Connect the input and the output directly. And I get a mix. Here's some so you know that's one way to go about it you can directly connect the audio input to the output and you get that mix that I was talking about uh, but again, I'm building this the way that I would build it, and I would want to be able to change the mix at some point in the future. So I'm going to go back to audio modules, and what I'm going to do is select an audio balance. And an audio balance is essentially just a two-channel mixer that's proportional. So as you turn the mix one way or the other, one of the channels is favored over the other. I'm going to disconnect my delay line from the output too. And then I'm going to connect my audio input to one channel of the audio balance and my delay line to the other. And then I can mix, adjust the mix, making the chorus lighter, or when the mix is all the way back at 100, 
I'm back to a vibrato. And this can be useful, you know, again, putting in a mix control like this, if you want to be able to switch between chorus and vibrato easily, you can just change the mix of an audio balance. Now, one thing you may have noticed, and part of the reason that I used one of my gain examples, uh, is that this chorus sounds a little flangy. Right? There's more of a chew to it than you might expect. And part of that is because right now our delay line is being modulated between zero milliseconds essentially and about three milliseconds. Um, chorus, you may have seen some of these charts, Chorus generally lives uh, a little bit further along in terms of modulation. You want to have a, um, a manual is what it's sometimes referred to, or a, a lag or delay. You can see this in a bunch of chorus and flanger modules. What those all do is move the center point of the modulation. Um, and part of the reason that, that you want to uh, avoid this really sort of low millisecond rate when you're going for chorusing is that chorusing um, is not generally associated with comb filtering. What we have here is a type of comb filter. So the, the longer the delay line is, the less the comb filtering will be noticed. And what I'm going to do to address that is just uh, add a value module. Since we're using linear delay times, we can think of the output of the value module in milliseconds. So right now I've moved the start point of the modulation about four milliseconds off of the dry signal uh, and and I'll let me turn this on uh, turn on a sample as I adjust this You know, we can start playing around with our depth uh, and our speed. Choruses are sometimes a bit faster. Uh, and our manual time, and we can get, you know, a bunch of... As you increase this this start point or this lag uh, time, you get sort of different effects. At a certain point, we start hearing more of a, a doubling effect, particularly if we turn modulation way down. So at about 35 milliseconds, at about 35 milliseconds, we pass into a slightly different effect from chorus uh, that's often referred to as doubling. What happens here is that we've reached sort of a limit point for your brain to hear the two sounds as, you know, part of a whole. 
And so because the delay line is sort of right at this cusp between hearing the sounds as, you know, part of the whole or as two entirely separate things, we kind of hear them as both. Uh, and so if you're looking for, you know, a, a doubler effect, um, it lives right in this 35 millisecond to, to 40, 45 millisecond range. You know, particularly if we had a less regular modulation, you want a little bit of modulation um, because it'll make the sounds seem kind of different. You know, the, the reason that you use a doubler effect is traditionally uh, to emulate the idea of, of multi-tracking. Um, so as we push this even further, our brain does start to hear a distinct echo and we move into slapback territory. So that's, you know, now we're hearing a distinct echo. Um, and if we feed the output of our delay line back into itself, we get sort of the traditional slapback sounds. That was a dangerous game I just played. Now, Flanger, on the other hand, lives off of comb filtering. So we want to move our manual, our lag time, our, our start point of modulation all the way back to where it was when we started uh, because flanger is really dependent on comb filtering. And the difference between a flanger and a chorus or a vibrato is once again you have this mixture between uh, you know a delayed, a modulated delay line and a dry signal but we add one more element to it which is feedback just like we did with the delay uh, when the delay is spread out enough that we hear distinct echoes we hear that as as sort of regeneration right you know you, you hear repeats of the echoes when that's at a much shorter degree what we hear is actually um, resonant peaks that are formed by the comb filtering of the delay line and they become more and more accentuated uh, they become more and more pronounced as we move uh, as we feed the output back into itself so what I'm gonna do here is connect uh, again and I'm I'm building this the way that I would you can connect the output directly uh, to the input of the delay line and attenuate it that way but I prefer to pass it through a VCA so that I could con control it later um, you know with a value module for instance I'm gonna keep that out of the picture just for now you know again with this lag time I could have started moving around the uh, delay lines bias but I didn't want to do that because I have modulation connected to it and I think it can make it a little bit harder to see what's happening. But all the effects that we achieved uh, using this value module where we you know, kept extending the delay time can be achieved by biasing the delay time itself uh, directly on the module. So I'm going to So what I'm going to do is start feeding the output of the delay line back into itself. You start to hear more and more harmonics. Right, we 
start hearing that uh, throaty quality of the flanger. We push it closer and closer to a unity gain. We push it too far. We get that sort of uh, robotic thing. And if you push it way too far, you get right. some really loud resonances that are, you know, kind of wacky, is how I would describe them. So we can also change the manual time, and that will affect the sort of tonal quality of our flanger. Uh, because the, the comb filter frequencies will change. our modulation all the way off, what we have is a resonator, a type of resonator. I don't know if you can hear that. Uh, there's a you know, a, a quality in here that is a little bit like uh, reverb. And that's because a lot of reverbs employ comb filtering. So as we move the lag time further back, we get lower frequencies of resonator. Uh, and as we move it forward, So there are a lot of time-based effects that can be employed just by building off of this concept of a modulated delay line. I'm going to talk about one last one, um, and that modulation effect is a variation of flanger called a through zero flanger. And to make that, all that we do is delay our dry signal a little bit. So instead of connecting it directly to the audio balance, what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect it to the output of the, or to the input of this delay line, which I've set to 100 milliseconds, just like our other delay line. Um, and then I'm going to connect that back into our mixer. Now, the reason that I do that is because um, all of the, the, you know, um, I don't know how to draw this. All of the, the modulation effects that we have seen so far have used a static point of reference, right? The, the delay line moves the, um, the frequency of the audio 
closer and further to a zero point. So what we're going to do here is in fact delay the, the incoming audio just a little bit. You only need a couple of milliseconds and then instead of using um, a, a unipolar LFO, we're going to change this to a bipolar LFO. And what that means is that right now we've just been having, if we think of this as our base delay line, our sine wave is just moving further and closer to this base uh, delay time. But what uh, is going to happen when we change that to a bipolar LFO is that our LFO is going to move around the center frequency, the center delay time. And if our dry signal and our delayed signal share that, that same base delay time, I'm going to set this at about two milliseconds, what will happen is that the uh, LFO will actually cause our modulated delay line to at certain points be ahead of our dry signal. It's not a dry signal anymore. What it is is a slightly delayed signal. Um, but this causes, or this creates a really cool effect. If you've ever heard a zero through flanger, uh, this is how it's done. It, you, you slightly delay the dry signal. So you don't really have a dry signal anymore. You have two delay signals one of which is modulated by a modulator that, that will cause uh, that uh, delayed line to move ahead and behind uh, the other delay line in time. So this is some high level time bending. We might have gotten into time bending 102. Um, so now we've set our LFO and the way that we create a bipolar LFO is by setting its range uh, instead of from 0 to 1 we set it to negative 1 to 1 and now instead of using this lag time as a minimum position it'll be a center point that the LFO will modulate around um, and it looks like we might need to add a little bit more or attenuate this a little bit. What we want to see is this, we're seeing this sort of bottom out at 0 0.02 and we don't want that to happen. We want it to continuously modulate. Uh, so we might need to add a little bit more lag time. Oh, uh, what I did there. I forgot to set its CV input to linear. So what we want to do is add a little bit more lag time. We want to see this LFO sort of continuously move this delay line. So now we're going to hear, it'll still sound like a flanger, but it'll sound like a different type of flanger. And there's a point where uh, the two delay lines catch up and they cancel one another out. So let's hear that. is a through zero flanger. So that's the basic class of uh, time-based modulation effects. Now you can take this a lot further. Um, you know, you can start obviously using different modulation sources. You can have modulation sources modulate other modulation sources. Um, you can try filtering 
uh, by inserting an audio inverter into the feedback path of your flanger, you can add uh, what's called negative feedback. So, and that'll change the, the tone of the flanger quite a lot. And you can, you know, create a, a time-based modulator, for instance, that morphs between all of these things, right? What we see here is just a, a situation in which, you know, we've got a modulation source that's attenuated at some level. That's your classic depth control. Uh, we've got a lag time control that just sets the, the uh, difference between, you know, the, the dry signal and the modulated signal. So, again, as you increase that, you can move from vibrato on flanger to chorusing to doubling to slapback echo and you can obviously modulate that lag time too if you did it slowly enough you might have a sound that that shifts between those things if you double all of these components you've got the stereo version of this right you know you take another channel and put it through the same processes um, and in that case, you might want to invert the waveform so that modulation, you know, moves in different directions in either channel, which can give a broader stereo image. Um, there are a lot of different ways that you can take these things, but the basic component of any of them is just, you know, it, it's a pretty simple process. It's a, you know, it's a modulated delay line a linearly modulated delay line. And you can try it with the exponential delay line. It sounds very different in my opinion, uh, but there may be some instance in which you think it works for what you want to do. So, you know, the, the idea is that this is just some fundamental stuff that you can build off of to build your own effects or, you know, to explore these effects further. Um, so, you know, there, there are a lot of different ways to, you know, take this stuff. And obviously, if you know anything about the world of effects, people have taken vibrato, chorus, and flanger in a lot of different directions. So, you know, f dig into it, start experimenting. Uh, I'll also say that, you know, if you're watching this and you're thinking, I don't know if I really want to go through with that, the, you know, the principles here are the same principles that are used in the effects modules that are already built for you, you know. Um, and so if you're, you'd rather use those, then by all means, go ahead and, and use those. This is uh, something that is maybe interesting to some, but it's not necessary to get these effects out of Zoya. Um, the Zoya flanger even has a zero through mode. So, or through zero, I'm, yeah, anyhow. Um, and so, you know, again, uh, there were some, there have been a lot of questions about this in the past. So I just thought I'd make a video that walks through them, uh, probably in more detail than I needed to, and less clearly than would have been preferred by some. But that's what we have. Uh, so thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, you know, I'll be posting this in forums. You can ask questions there. Uh, obviously, questions in the comments of the video itself. I'm happy to answer. Um, and yeah, that's it. Thank you.